Hey guys, welcome back to Drawing with Michael. I am Michael. So today I'm gonna do a really quick and dirty um, character sketch of the alter ego of um, Dr. Jekyll. Uh, today we're gonna be working on Mr. Hyde. <laughs> Enjoy. Okay, so I'm gonna try and go as fast as I can uh, with this one. I don't want it to be a 35 or 40 minute video. I want it to be quick and dirty. Um, that means basically I want it to be rough. <laughs> Why did I get rough? No, really, what I'm basically gonna do today is just a really rough sketch of, um, of the alter ego of the character uh, design that I worked on a few uh, days ago or last week or whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so, I, I, I don't get a heck of a lot of comments, but a lot of times the comments that I do get pertain to process or, you know, the basics of exactly what it takes, you know, to draw, um, you know, characters and character studies and stuff like that. And it takes, gosh, it's, it's hard for me, for me to really give you a definitive answer because of the fact that it, it for me, at least it changes, um, you know, it changes every time. I do have a rhythm and flow work that I work, um, you know, that I do. I don't even know if that was a sentence. I do have kind of a way that I do things. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm always trying to change things up, you know? I'm always trying to re kind of define what I'm doing at that particular point in time. Like today, I woke up this morning and I, and I had that really definitive inclination to do kind of a creature. This ear's in the wrong place. Whoa, this ear's really wrong. <clears throat> so I was like, you know, I promised the guys on the YouTube channel that I was going to revisit my doc my Dr. And Jekyll, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde um, picture. So that's kind of what I'm doing today. Um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, who, who were they? I don't know the complete story. Um, I do know the, the, you know, the basics of it. You know, scientist, mad scientist has an inclination to tap into the, similar to the Hulk, and I'm, and I'm sure this is the whole premise that the Hulk was based on. Um, you know, and, and tapping into that primordial, uh, monstrous thing that lives inside of human beings. Um, and really, you see, I'm talking to you guys and I'm screwing up my drawing. Um, you know, looking at what it is to, you know, that monster kind of inside of everybody. And, you know, you have this scientist who, who has, you know, all this incredible intelligence. But then on the other hand, he's got this madness that really kind of takes over... Um, who he is and, and what he's about. And, and that's kind of where, you know, Mr. Hyde lies. I know there's been a lot of movies about this character. Um, and who he is and what he is and how terrible he is and I just like to think that Mr. Hyde is sort of misunderstood. He's always had the inclination to be someone spectacular and the drastic, dastardly Dr. Jekyll always gets in the frickin' way. Just kidding. I can always tell you right now, the drawing's too big for the paper. So I got into this and I started talking and I started messing around. And now I'm to the point where I don't like where I'm going. <laughs> and this happens. You know, you gotta kinda work with it. 
and I'm going to try to work with it. I'm probably going to end up screwing up my drawing. You know, it's like a battle. It's a battle this morning between me and this drawing. Uh, I am working on Strathmore um, comic book paper with the margins. I like the tooth of this, how smooth it is, and it works really well with my Progresso Coinor Light Vermilion Pencil, uh, pe uh, woodless colored pencil. I really like this because I can put it on its side and I can get some nice um, shading, as you can see, as I screw up my drawing even more. <clears throat> This is literally the first time I've picked up a pencil. Today, I've been working digitally a lot <laughs> because of work. I don't know if any of you guys and gals can relate. Okay, so as I come down to the chin area, I'm always thinking too, whenever I do stuff like this, and I've said this in my videos before, um, placement of items uh, on the face and where they're supposed to go. Obviously, it's my drawing. I do whatever the freaking heck I want to. You know, I can elongate. I can make things bigger, smaller. I can, you know, I can screw the anatomy completely up because it's my drawing, you know. But since I'm doing kind of a quasi-realistic character, I really need to think of anatomy and where stuff goes. So, you know, the underlying skeletal structure, here's the outside of the bone right here of the cheek. So what I'm gonna do is, is since I've already placed and established that in a three quarter view, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna think, where am I going to put this bone, okay? So I'm thinking in terms of planes. So this plane comes out of the bone and this plane comes over and over. And then you have this fat of the cheek but since Mr. Hyde is, he's genetically modified in some capacity from the serum that he takes, that Dr. Jekyll takes, you know, he's got this very uh, sallow demeanor to him in his, in his face and he's very shrunken. Um, you know, I've got this eyeball that comes here and then I've got this other eyeball that comes here. What a lot of people, especially new artists, don't realize is your typical eye is not this. It's not that. The eyeball lives inside of the socket, okay? And the lid comes over here, and then you got this fat part that comes here, the lower lid, and the upper lid comes up and over, and the entire eyeball resides inside of that socket, right? Okay, so that's what you have to remember is you've got this fatty part. And again, these are planes. So a lot of times I'll draw these little areas here to show the different planes of how they are. So then, and I wish I would have drawn that right here. <laughs> Just kidding. So here we go. That's the black part. And that eye is really just in that socket. And then now that I've established where that eyeball is, I can think in terms of the bone and the underlying structure that comes in, and then it comes here, because that skull here, and that jawline comes here, and I can basically, I can cover it with some hair. <laughs> okay. So, comes up and his eyes are really wide because that eyeball is almost popping out of the skull. Right? It's partially exposed. Scaring the crap out of children. And that brow comes down and it folds all of this stuff. Whenever you have that brow line that comes down here, it comes way down, right? And it scrunches all of this stuff up. So you need to think, how's, how am I gonna deal with that? So what I like to do 
is I'll have it come here. Because you got to think, you got to draw through stuff and how stuff is going to be constructed, right? I've got this hat that's going to cover up a lot of the stuff because the hat comes around and it goes to the back of his head. And his ear is actually going to be way off the page, so we're not even going to worry about that. So his hair kind of squigglies out. And here's the hat again. Here, here. Comes down. I always thought it was fascinating that whenever Mr. or Dr. Jekyll gets transformed, you know, not only does his face get transformed, but his clothes get transformed as well. Okay, so we'll do that in just a little bit because it's kind of freaky. Okay, so then we have... Again, to, thinking in terms of planes and how things wrap, that hat comes like this. You have all of these, you know, the planes here, right? And then you have this hair. And again, if you look at this line here, I'm already feeling this. I'm feeling out the drawing and exactly how it works. I'm having this line come here. What's gonna happen now is because is, opposing lines really help the dynamic um, the dynamic feel of the piece. So now I've got this line that comes here, okay? And then now I've got this cheek that comes out. So here, so that's another opposite, okay? And then I've got this to determine how I'm gonna do this because I've got bone comes out, comes in, right? And you got this cheek that comes around because again, he's got that sallow sunken feel to him. And I'm trying to, it's like I'm sculpting. If anybody can relate to me, let me know in the comments. I'm sculpting out my drawing, right? I'm feeling how dull my pencil is right now. Dull pencil. <laughs> Better. So now I come to the bottom part and then, you know, I, you have to think too in terms of how things are gonna reside. Like you have a bucket, right? A bucket, okay? If I want something to sit inside, I'm not gonna draw it up here. I'm gonna put it inside and it's gonna have that overlapping and I'm not gonna see everything. Even though I know there's stuff down here, maybe it's a hot. <laughs> it's a hot in a bucket, okay getting out of hand. So now I'm going to think in terms of the teeth and he's still human, but he's been genetically modified with the serum. So I need to think how far am I going to push that genetic modification, right? And two, things sit inside the mouth. So in the terms of distance, the teeth are going to come up because he's gritting his teeth. He's like, I'm going to eat your soul. But he's not eating souls because at the end of the day, he's a health doctor and he's going to make you feel better as he prescribes a prescription of death. Not really death. He's, that's not really his game plan. It's Indeed, it's not who he... No, that's what we're doing today. We're doing Mr. High. So I'm, I'm roughing in these forms and these shapes and basic shapes and how they are, you know, and then I'm thinking, okay, he's got that expression that comes around. He's like, son of a biscuit, how dare you put milk in my latte? You will know the wrath of Mr. Hyde. The hair comes down. You got this jawline that juts out and it's going to be partially covered by the hair. So then I come over to the chin, which I've been avoiding, by the way. If you haven't noticed, I've been avoiding the chin because I have no idea what I'm going to do for it yet. There we go. And this continues around. And it comes around here. And then we've got this. Since his neck is, he's kind of pushing out, you know, he's pushing out of the, you know, you have it like this. And he's pushing out. He's like, how dare you put milk in my latte? So, oh, what is this? Hmm, it's like a little burr inside of there. I know the solution to that. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So anyway, so that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna put a skull up here because that's what happens to Mr. Hyde's Victorian outfit. It turns into a skull. I don't know, what am I doing? Wow, that's a little burr. That's wild. That, my friends, what is that? It's a thread? A thread in my pencil? How dare you? So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this around here. Okay, and then we're gonna take the hair. Okay, and I'm gonna turn it on its side and I'm gonna color this in to also helps re-establish and frame that face. Okay, so I want the light to come over here so it's gonna cast a shadow here and I probably have some rim lighting here, right? And then I'm gonna have, you know what's funny is every time, you know, like Mr. Hyde, even though he's a, he's a murderous creature of death, he still, he still wears a suit. You got to have proper, proper outfits, right? here and it wraps around and he won't be able to see this and it comes around here and he's got a tie and his tie's all wrinkled because of course the serum affects his clothes too that makes complete sense right you know what screw you it's my drawing i'll do whatever i want and then whenever you have these these shapes of like the face and the mouth and they're all pushing and pulling you know they're pushing they're pushing and pulling the skin you're gonna have you know, these, these items, these wrinkles that happen. Now, of course, this is just a rough, I'm, I'm literally just trying to get in exactly, you know, the shapes and how things are gonna go. And what I will do is I'll take a photograph of this, I'll drag it into a digital environment, and I'll start messing around with it. I mean, stuff like this, like I'll go back and I'll correct this. You know, the shape of the head. And I've got this, you know, the bottom, the top of the head comes up here and it comes over here. And But what I'm gonna basically do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling, tweaking the drawing, feeling how, you know, the emotion. And, and as I go through, you know, my original intention is to have the light coming from this distance. He's gonna have, you know, over here is gonna be darker because you have one side that is the struggle and one side is the psychotic. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. And then we'll have a simple light that comes over here. And I'll put these little cues, and this is of course just the rough, because we all know he likes it rough. And you have these crinkle lips. You know, because the serum ages you and it makes you horribly disfigured to look at. I'm telling you, keep the daggum milk out of my latte. So that's this morning's drawing. Something quick and dirty, something simple. I'm going to go ahead and scan this in. And I'm going to do a digital overdraw of it. I'll do a final of the uh, overdraw. And then I will drag it into my favorite digital program. I don't know what that is. I don't really have a favorite. I like me some Photoshop. I like me some Sketchbook Pro. It changes based upon my mood. So that's kind of where I'm at. Maybe it comes up here. I'm gonna color these in. He's got another one down here. <laughs> anyway, so thank you guys for visiting the channel. Thanks for listening to me drone on and have fun on this drawing. This is of course a rough sketch. So this would be continued on into a, a, a larger drawing, a larger format, um, not format, a larger um, piece. Maybe I'll extend down, you know, put them in a, in a really cool uh, environment. I haven't decided yet. But what it'll end up happening is I will refine, 
redefine exactly what I want to do with the piece and just really start playing around with. This is just the beginning, you know? So anyway, thank you guys for uh, visiting the channel and definitely come back. I'm gonna be trying to do these really quick and dirty drawings um, to show you guys that you don't need to stress out about drawing. It doesn't need to be a chore, you know? You sit down, you explore, you have fun, you make tons of mistakes. I mean, gosh, there's tons of mistakes in this drawing. But what's really cool is the fact that I know it's a process. I know it's got parts to it and I can take one part at a time. So if you're a student, if you're an old dog like me, or if you're somebody just starting out and you wanna learn how to draw, just understand that drawing is a process. It, it takes time, it takes a lot of practice. It, it, you know, it happens in parts. Um, and what'll happen, the more and more you do it, and the more and more that you explore the, um, you know, the different avenues of how to draw and, and, and avenues of how people draw, and that's one of the reasons why you're on this channel, is it'll become a feeling. And that feeling, you know, that emotional response, that emotional cue that, that's inside of you and all the things that, that happen inside of you, it'll become a feeling that you'll be able to recognize as, you know, whenever you're drawing, oh yeah, this is working, this is not working. Early in the drawing, I felt like it wasn't working. But you know what? I pushed through. And that's what you guys got to do. You got to push through because you never know what's on the other side. Um, of course, you know, there's different ways uh, of drawing. There's different methodologies and, and you know, explore those avenues and, and do what you can. Digitally, do what you can. Traditionally, I, I love drawing traditional because I like feeling the paper. I like feeling the pencil on the paper. I like getting marker and, and colored pencil on my fingers. So that's me. You know, you have to kind of find out what works for you. So I'm going to go ahead and scan this in or take a picture of it with my phone. And yeah, I might work on Procreate. I don't know. We'll see. I'm supposed to do a review of my Cinti Companion soon. And then I'm supposed to do a review of my Surface Pro 3. I don't know. There's just so much to do. Anyway, thank you guys for visiting. Hit that smash, hit the smash button if you if you like what you see. If if you like it, um, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm trying to grow the channel a little bit um, to possibly get some revenue from it uh, to cover the cost of the videos. I've got a lot of videos up here, so definitely watch some of the videos. Um, I think we're up to like 2,400 subscribers, and it's a start. You know, I've had the video channel now for close to four years, so. Um, I hope you guys are getting something from it. <laughs> uh, definitely. So thank you guys. And, uh, we'll definitely see you next time. Bye. Do, 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 singing in a minor key. Cause it's a creepy image.